As someone who hates snow, I really moved to the perfect place, didn't I? It was 15 degrees Celsius and sunny two days ago. It's almost May. This is how excited I am about this. All right, folks, I've got a big announcement to make. Several of my patrons have come up with a really cool idea, namely Vaughn, Blargity, Neot, Gunshot, Sword Sage, uh, Angry Clown, Akenrays. I think that's everybody. <laughs> Forgive me if I forgot anyone. This cool idea of doing a weapon design competition. So people can enter the contest by contributing a melee weapon design. Uh, it can be a sketch drawing, 3D model, anything visual like that, uh, along with ideally a description. It can be as detailed as you want. You know, if you have measurements and everything, even better, it doesn't have to, but the more detail you can provide, the better. There are going to be quite a number of prizes for the winners. So I'm gonna be the one judging all of you and your designs. And the first prize winner, the best design, will actually be made by Quinn and then sent to me for testing, and then afterwards sent on to you. That is going to be really awesome. Definitely excited about that. And there's also a bunch of other really cool prizes. You know, Vaughn has handmade a shield and various jewelry. Blargy is providing some cool 3D prints. And I also have two contributions myself. One is a $50 PlayStation Store gift card. Only valid in the US, unfortunately. It's kind of weird to me that it's not international. Anyway, and another one, which basically the rest of the video is going to be about how I made it. Before we get to that, I also need to talk about something that I have somewhat mixed feelings about. So first off, obviously, this is a really cool idea and I very much like it. And I really appreciate that these awesome folks decided to do that, and they're doing all the organizing, basically. All I have to do is, you know, I, I just made the thing that I'm going to contribute, and I'm gonna have to evaluate the entries and decide on the winners. But uh, they're, they're handling all the other um, administrative parts, basically. And I really appreciate that the idea came up in order to help out the channel, which they're already doing because they are patrons. Uh, and so that's awesome. However, the original idea was that only patrons can enter the contest and they've also set up a fundraiser. And as much as I appreciate it, I'm not really comfortable with that right now. In fact, I've decided to not require Patreon membership for this because th these are tough times economically. A lot of people have lost their job or haven't been able to work during the quarantine and a lot of people are really struggling and I cannot possibly justify asking anyone for money right now at all. I want people to take care of their own financial needs first and foremost and I'm also kind of uncomfortable with the donations part even though that's completely voluntary and is not a requirement for entering the contest and personally, I, I kind of want to scrap that too, but that, seemed, that would seem like a slap in the face to everybody who, who got together to organize this because that was the idea. They wanted to do something to help out the channel. And if, I, if I'm just like, no, nah, screw that, I'll cast it all aside, that would just seem kind of disrespectful and unappreciative. So we're leaving that in, but I'm scrapping the Patreon requirement for the contest. There is no requirement for the contest other than there's a certain minimum age and there are certain guidelines for how to contribute a design, but otherwise it's open for everybody. So big thank you to everybody who schemed behind my back and uh, collaborated to get this into motion. Highly appreciate it. Also, ev every single patron, I appreciate all of you. You're really helping out but do take care of your own finances first. All right, enough about that. So the link will be down below. You'll get all the information you need there. Okay, so now onto the thing that I made 
for this contest as a prize. You may have seen the rehilt of the Panabas that I did. And I took another look at it and I decided it is freaking hideous. It's an abomination. <laughs> I mean, the shield boss as a handguard is kind of neat from a, a practical point of view, but it, just the way I did it, I mean, first big crafting project, it, it was ugly. So I decided to tear it off. Uh, I actually recorded that, but apparently I lost most of it. I just have a bit of blurry footage left of prying the, the handle off it. Uh, anyway, so I decided to make an entirely new one. You'll see the making off process and then afterwards I'll show you and talk a bit more about it.
Well, I guess I just rolled a one. Apparently I pulled too hard on the cap of that bottle of spray paint and I pulled off the nozzle, so it erupted into an unstoppable stream of paint. Some of the gravel here is now copper colored. Yeah, and that was my only can of that color. Great. Either I have to get another one and wait to finish this, or I have to go with a different color. What's it gonna be? Well, the only other color I have left is Hunter Green. Well, the beauty of spray paint is, if you hate it, you can always paint it over. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I should have done it the other way around, black with green rings, but... Well, I wanted copper with black rings, so... Well... Freaking cold today. Late April, but still feels like winter. Anyway, so I had some metallic acrylic paint, and this is what I came up with. Not terrible, but it looks a bit too flat, so I'll, I'll try if I can give it more of an aged metal look. All right, so after spending way too much time on it, trying to fix and redo it over and over again, I'm finally fairly happy with how the paint job turned out. For a complete noob, not too bad. So, moving on to the grip. So that's that. In hindsight, I should have probably just left the black spray paint on the top and bottom and just wrapped it with the brown leather because that would have been nice contrast. Uh, this, this back and forth painting it took way too long and the end result, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it actually. It, I was going for an aged bronze look and it does kind of look like it, from a distance, at least. I mean, you can tell that it's not actual metal. And next time, if I do something like this, I'm either going to use actual metal or I'm just going to leave it as wood and just stain it, maybe. Or this, the, the painting is <laughs> it's a bit involved. Anyway, uh, so in terms of ergonomics, I'm definitely happy with how it turned out. I wanted to allow for a number of different grips. So I shaped this curvature here so you can rest your index finger on it for uh, more precise thrusts, this sort of grip. And uh, you can even put the, the finger on here. So that would be a thrusting oriented kind of grip. And this actually also helps with cuts, I found. It just allows you to control the edge a little bit better so that's pretty neat. You know, there's not much of a guard to begin with, and it's just wood, so it wouldn't really protect you. This would be the kind of thing that you would use together with a buckler, or, I mean, a lot of Filipino blades just don't have any guards. It's just you use them differently. And I, I didn't want to make another crappy attempt at a guard because I just... I don't have the experience with metalworking. I'll probably get into it some more eventually, but it's not going to be forging anytime soon. It's just going to be you know, stock removal, basically, grinding and cutting. Anyway, so um, that works out pretty well. This is really comfortable. And uh, I've got this, this hook here at the bottom, so you can actually use this to, to slide all the way down. And uh, this is very secure in the hand. So... 
quite like how that turned out. In fact, I can tell that I did a pretty good job because while I'm handling it, I'm kind of like, damn, I'd like to keep this. <laughs> I'm not going to, this is going to be a prize, but that's, yeah, turned out pretty well. Um, you can definitely debate the aesthetics, <laughs> you know, that's personal preference, but I, I'm glad that I did put this piece of faux leather on there because it's nice and soft and uh, also gives you quite a decent grip. And uh, yeah, this thing is really light. And I feel like this is, this feels like this is what the blade is supposed to be. You know, the Panabas with the, the really long grip just seem kind of weird on such a light blade. It just, it feels like it quote unquote wants to be a single handed sword. And so now it is. So quite like that. So there is also still the scabbard. It doesn't fit it quite right. I actually wanted to shape the top so that it fits with the guard so you can fully insert it. But then I realized that when I had cut it a while ago, it's a bit too short now. So it doesn't go in any further than this anyway. So yeah, this is basically, this is just for storage and transportation. Uh, it doesn't have any belt attachment anyway, so it's not gonna be for carrying really but I'll, I'll just throw it in because it's there. By the way, if you're outside of Canada, it's your responsibility to make sure that this is legal where you live. I think it should be just about everywhere, but you never know. Do check. If this gets stopped by customs in your country, then it's lost and, and I can't do anything about it. So just so you know. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about it. This video is probably quite long. So we'll leave it at that. Um, thank you one, once again, everybody who work together on this and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing the designs. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks.